Hi everyone, this lesson is on weird signs and symptoms of a vitamin D deficiency, including conditions that are associated with a vitamin D deficiency like certain cancers, cardiovascular disease, and infections. We're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. Before we talk about those, let's talk about what vitamin D is and why we need it. So vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, and there are actually two forms of vitamin D. One is called vitamin D2, which is also known as ergocalciferol, and there is vitamin D3, which is also known as cholecalciferol. Now, vitamin D is important because it's required for calcium homeostasis, bone maintenance and metabolism, and immune system functioning. Now, we can get vitamin D from our diet, so through dietary consumption and via endogenous synthesis. So with regards to dietary consumption, we can get vitamin D from eating animal food products like fish and meat, plants like mushrooms, fortified dairy milk, and vitamin D supplements, so actually taking a pill with vitamin D. And we can also get it from endogenous synthesis. Endogenous means that we actually produce it from our own body. Now, this is where vitamin D is actually derived from cholesterol. So there's cholesterol in our skin. And when that cholesterol in our skin is exposed to sunlight, can actually go through a process of formation of vitamin D3, which is cholecalciferol. So those are the methods whereby we can get vitamin D. Now, if we're not getting enough sunlight, if we're not getting enough in our diet, we can get a vitamin D deficiency. And the typical signs and symptoms that we think about with a vitamin D deficiency are issues with our bones because vitamin D is so important in calcium homeostasis and bone maintenance and metabolism. We often think about having issues with bone health due to a vitamin D deficiency. So things like osteoporosis. But what I want to talk to you about in this lesson is that there are weird and atypical signs and symptoms and certain conditions that are associated with a vitamin D deficiency that we don't think about often. And we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. So the first group of signs and symptoms I want to talk about in a vitamin D deficiency that we don't often think about is psychological effects. So vitamin D deficiency can cause psychological and neurological issues. So some include depression. This is going to be a reversible depression. So we can have a low mood. It's not going to be major depressive disorder. So because there is an underlying biological cause in that being vitamin D deficiencies causing the depression, we wouldn't categorize this as major depressive disorder. Irritability can also occur in these patients as well. And we can also have lethargy occurring as well. So lethargy is feeling tired and feeling fatigued. So this can also occur in a vitamin D deficiency as well. Some other psychological effects include irritability. We mentioned irritability with depression, but more specifically, irritability can occur in children. So instead of having a lower mood, children can become more irritable. And that can be something that can be noted in children with a vitamin D deficiency. And there can be developmental delay in younger individuals as well. So this is going to occur in children. And this is where we have significant and longer lasting vitamin D deficiencies that occur during early development. So developmental delay can occur in children who have a vitamin D deficiency. So very important to make sure that children are getting enough vitamin D. Now the next group of conditions I wanna talk about are metabolic conditions. So these are going to be associated with vitamin D deficiency. The first one I wanna talk about is obesity. Now obesity is associated with vitamin D deficiency. We don't know entirely whether or not it's vitamin D deficiency causing obesity or obesity causing vitamin D deficiency. It is known though that vitamin D, because it's a fat soluble vitamin, and there is more fat tissue or more adipose tissue in obesity, there can be more sequestration of vitamin D in fat tissue in obesity. So when you actually check someone with obesity, they are going to have a lower vitamin D level. So it is likely that obesity and having more adipose tissue is going to lead to lower serum levels of vitamin D, but it's still not entirely known whether or not vitamin D deficiency can contribute to getting obesity. But regardless of that fact, patients with obesity are going to have lower levels of vitamin D on average. So it's best to supplement these individuals because vitamin D deficiency is associated with other issues like infection which we're going to discuss here in a moment. Another metabolic condition I want to discuss is diabetes. Now, diabetes is also associated with a vitamin D deficiency. Now, this association is not surprising. We just mentioned that vitamin D deficiency is associated with obesity, and we know that obesity is an important risk factor for getting diabetes. But there are other pathophysiological reasons as to why we may believe that vitamin D deficiency is more strongly associated with diabetes or it may actually cause or worsen diabetes. So some of these include the fact that vitamin D deficiency or insufficiency, so a milder deficiency, may worsen insulin efficacy. And the reason that this may be is that vitamin D can reduce inflammation. So it has regulations on 
inflammatory processes and also regulates reactive oxygen species or ROS formation. And reactive oxygen species formation is something that can be damaging to cells. So in patients who have issues with insulin sensitivity, perhaps they have obesity or they are overweight, but they don't have diabetes yet. If they have issues with insulin sensitivity, their pancreas and their pancreatic beta cells, more specifically the cells in the pancreas that actually produce insulin, are going to make more insulin. And when they make more insulin, they can lead to increased formation of reactive oxygen species. As I mentioned before, reactive oxygen species are damaging to cells, and this can lead to inflammation in the pancreas. And because vitamin D can help reduce inflammation and reduce ROS formation, vitamin D can help regulate this damage and can help regulate and prevent too much damage occurring in the pancreas. But if we have a vitamin D deficiency, we can have issues with worsening inflammation and worsening reactive oxygen species formation in the pancreas, leading to damage or worsening damage to the pancreas and pancreatic beta cells, which are the ones that produce insulin. So you can imagine that if there's not enough vitamin D, this can lead to damage to those pancreatic beta cells and eventually lead to issues with insulin production in diabetes. So this is why we can say that Perhaps there's more of a causal link with regards to vitamin D deficiency in diabetes because of vitamin D's ability to regulate inflammation in reactive oxygen species. And vitamin D is also important in regulating genetic expression as well. So there can be some different regulation in the pancreas and other parts of the body that are regulated by vitamin D. And if vitamin D is not around, we're not going to have that regulation occurring properly. So those are just some brief mechanisms as to why vitamin D can help reduce some damage to the pancreas. And if we have a vitamin D deficiency, we can have worsening inflammation, worsening reactive oxygen species formation, and damage to the pancreas if we don't have enough vitamin D around. We're now going to look at some other conditions that have been associated with a vitamin D deficiency as well. So these include cardiac issues. So cardiovascular disease has been associated with a vitamin D deficiency. So especially in patients who are already at risk for cardiovascular disease, if they have a vitamin D deficiency, they're at an even higher risk. Again, the causal association or relationship is not entirely understood, but we do know that it is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. And it may be due to vitamin D's effect in regulating the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So I won't get into too much here, but again, there has been association with cardiovascular disease and there have been some proposed mechanisms as to why this occurs. The next group of conditions I want to talk about that have been associated with a vitamin D deficiency is cancer. So vitamin D deficiency has been associated with several types of cancer. These include prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, and breast cancer. And I won't get into all the specific details here. I'll have a whole other lesson on some of the pathophysiological relationships with vitamin D in cancer. But suffice to say, there is an inverse relationship with vitamin D levels and risk of these types of cancers. So there's an association with lower levels of vitamin D and higher risks of prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, and breast cancer. And the next group of issues I want to talk about in a vitamin D deficiency is infections. So vitamin D is essential in immune system regulation. It does this through several different mechanisms. One is through regulating and increasing the production of antimicrobial peptides. These include catholicidins and defensins. So catholicidins and defensins are these peptides that can bind to different microbes like viruses and bacteria to help the immune system essentially attack those microbes. And vitamin D is also important in T cell functioning as well. So it has multiple functions in the immune system. If you want more information on how vitamin D regulates and how it functions in the immune system, please check my full lesson on vitamin D and the immune system. So in vitamin D deficiencies, we can have increased risk of respiratory infections, such as infections with influenza virus and tuberculosis. So there is not only an increased prevalence of these infections, but an increased severity of respiratory infections as well. So again, vitamin D is important in combating respiratory infections, and it's also important in combating other infections as well, including bacterial vaginosis. So vitamin D deficiencies increase the risk of having bacterial vaginosis. And then vitamin D deficiency is also known to occur in HIV or human immunodeficiency virus infections. So the majority of HIV positive patients and the numbers are usually around 70 to 85 percent of patients are going to be vitamin D deficient. And as I mentioned before, vitamin D is so important in immune system functioning that because these patients have a vitamin D deficiency, they're at a higher risk of having other secondary infections. So it's going to be important to actually supplement these patients with vitamin D since their immune system is going to be affected 
due to the HIV infection and also because they have vitamin D deficiency. So please check my lessons on vitamin D in the immune system and vitamin D in cancers. And if you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.